Hello everybody, my name is Henry Gordon-Smith and I'm the founder and CEO of Agritecture. And we're on a mission to accelerate the transition to climate smart agriculture globally. Now today we're here in Cairo, Egypt. Egypt is a really interesting country because it's got a massive population that's growing and it's on the edge of climate change. It's actually one of the top water scarce countries in the world and it actually produces a lot of agriculture. So there's both this challenge of managing climate change, but also the opportunity of a rich agricultural history and a large market that can consume the product and also export it to Europe and around the world. Now we're here in Cairo, Egypt, investigating more about the food system and finding key innovators across what's called the farm to fork strategy, which as you can tell is a mimic of the European farm to fork strategy. So what this means is we're looking at sustainable food production, sustainable food distribution and management, as well as consumption and managing food waste. So in this short video, we're gonna feature some farmers and some people across that food system to showcase what's happening in Egypt and tell you a little bit more about how Egypt is leading the way in climate smart agriculture. Take a look. This is Khaled, uh, co-founder of Kiwa. Uh, Kiwa adopted IVS or Sanphonics. It's busy, very, very similar to aquaponics, uh, where we have a fish tank and we take the uh, fish waste through irrigation uh, pipes. And the big difference is we have a sand grow bed, where sand works like a mechanical and biological filter, and also it's a growing media. So it's very efficient compared uh, to uh, aquaponics. We also make use of the solid waste of the fish. In aquaponics, you have to get rid of the fish waste, solid fish waste. So uh, also we have uh, uh, efficient energy use because only the pumps work uh, two hours a day. Um, and of course, it's uh, more tolerant and resilient because we here we can withstand the power outage. And it's a very important feature that we can grow leafy greens and vine crops with no extra investment. I'm very excited because we are sol solving a, a real uh, problem, uh, the water scarcity. Because here we, we only use 10% of uh, water compared to other uh, conventional methods. So um, yeah, and, and we, are, we have a value in this uh, system. And it's also uh, uh, yani, suitable to our environment. You know, we have a lot of sand, uh, not just importing technology from Europe or America, that doesn't suit our environment. So we have a big advantage and value that we see what we are pursuing. Hi, Maida Centenary, founder and CEO of Hydro Farms. Welcome to our tomatoes greenhouse. Hydro Farms, we do contract farming, fresh produce trading, as well as turnkey solutions, urban and large scale, as well as agri-tech solutions. So we basically work with other farms and farmers by sharing our knowledge and experience, our accumulated experience of 10 years. And uh, we work with other, the collaboration and work other farms is very important because the main challenge here is uh, knowledge sharing and access to data and information and experience to grow the whole industry. But we're trying to enhance and to find solutions locally throughout the supply and value chain and this was not uh, believed or uh, uh, thought that can be happen that can happen in Egypt. But now we are working with local suppliers, worker, local farms, and manufacturers, and making this happen, and actually drop the costs for smart agriculture, which will encourage and uh, help this whole industry grow, not only in Egypt but the whole region. What are three words you would use to describe Egyptian food? Uh, tasty, uh, historical and uh, like what do you call it, uh, colorful. Hi, my name is Mustafa Rifai. I'm the co-founder, executive chef for Zuba Restaurants. Uh, an Egyptian street food concept started 12 years ago. Always, uh, food is part of our culture. So, or actually it's a big measure of our culture. And in Egypt, people weren't so proud 12 years ago because they had the revolution and people were like, uh, it was a mess, the whole country. So we came up with this idea of promoting Egyptian street food to make you feel like you are in an Egyptian home. And I think we nailed it. My hope and vision for that, I want and people understand the culture and the food culture in Egypt. It's really rich, but needs the spotlights to be shining this culture. So we need to put our hands together between the farms and the chefs, consumers to do this. So hopefully one day. Inshallah. Inshallah. My name is Farah Khalid. I'm the co-founder of a business called The Monster's Table. 
uh, we're a subscription service. We offer meal kits for children. Uh, we're hoping to revolutionize the way families eat in Egypt. Uh, try to get families to eat together rather than eat separately where the kids eat alone and the parents eat alone. I think maybe it's like a cultural thing where, where we think kids' food is a lot different than what we eat, but it's actually pretty much the same, uh, but just in smaller portions. We have an app and a website. Um, it's pretty cool actually the, the parent comes in and we have five different monsters and every monster is specific is a specific eating uh, habit of a different child so you answer a couple of questions and then the, the parent kind of figures out which character their child is and then uh, our meals are portioned in, in that way so that like let's say Willow is one of our characters he doesn't like veggies he doesn't like to see his veggies so all his veggies start off hidden and then we kind of upgrade the child to see his veggies so that they fall in love with the veggies later on. I like the fact that everything's made in Egypt, the branding's made in Egypt, our chefs are Egyptian, our food's all local. Um, you also get a better um, um, understanding and the quality. You, you really uh, give it its value when you know where it's coming from and all the farms and and you know the meat sources and uh, all our meats and our chickens and all our veggies all of that stuff comes from farms where i personally know the we personally me and my partner and i uh, know the owners so we know we're getting good stuff our menu is pretty uh, we have a big variety just trying to get the perspective across the parents that children do eat like us you know everybody's talking about picky eating or fussy eating right now this is exactly how you fix the problem if you're eating the same food there's the children are more susceptible to be you know, to feel like they're eating like their parents, so it's just the norm, it becomes the norm, so they're eating healthy all together. This is Jadi Ahmed, I'm co-founder, uh, CCO of uh, Zist. Zist is a, a content company specialized in creating food content. Uh, we began six years ago, uh, having the, uh, the vision to be the Middle Eastern cuisine and the Egyptian uh, library cuisine on the internet. We are aiming to answer the question of uh, the daily question of what we will eat today. So if you are hungry, uh, the first thing that should come to your head is this. So you uh, open our, one of our channels. We are uh, on different platforms, YouTube, Facebook and Instagram uh, and see what we have cooked for you today. Most of the, of the videos, uh, all of the videos are based on uh, local, uh, local ingredients from the uh, that you can find on the shelf of the supermarket behind you the Egyptian cuisine is very well, well uh, very, very old cuisine very uh, deep rooted um, it's for thousands of years now and uh, it lacks uh, good publicity it lacks, uh, it lacks good uh, marketing about it the Egyptians uh, created fermentation they uh, we uh, invented the beer they invented even some of the French del uh, delicacies like the foie gras and Egyptian uh, Egyptian invention uh, because we uh, believed in the second life thing so Egyptians created all the, the methods that helped them to uh, preserve uh, the ingredients they have um, you know I'm not an expert of, uh, of Egyptian cuisine but I'm only the guy that uh, trying to connect people who has the story people who still do these uh, things before they uh, they gone away uh, and we didn't uh, uh, do them uh, again. Thank you so much for following Farm to Fork in Egypt and learning more about this incredible community from production all the way through to the food that we consume. If you want to learn more about any of the incredible organizations featured here, please reach out to them directly. Or of course, you can contact Agritecture and me at henry at agritecture.com. Thank you so much for following. And remember, all of us can be a part of a smarter and more resilient food system by making sure that when we buy food, we're supporting local farmers and local chefs and the local economy. Take care.